So it's been a few months since Battlefront 2 was cancelled and I was just taking a quick look through this EA earnings call. These are quarterly meetings EA executives hold with investors and researchers to report on the company's growth and how EA's games are selling. Mostly boring stuff, right? But sometimes they drop a few lines or a little bit of information about future Star Wars games and what their future plans are for Star Wars. A few months ago, it was one of these meetings that confirmed multiple new Star Wars games were in development, which are Jedi Fallen Order sequel and of course Star Wars Squadrons. Anyway, something was said in the latest EA earnings call which has me a little confused about Battlefront 2 and EA's decision to pull the plug on this game, which I'm sure we can all agree was one of the most disappointing events in all of Star Wars gaming history. Battlefront 2 being brought back from the dead and having a resurgence was a symbol of hope in the gaming community and in a lot of ways it started to earn EA back their reputation. So let me show you what I'm talking about and why I'm a little confused. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. Blake Jorgensen, EA's COO and CFO, made a few comments about EA's future of Star Wars gaming and how recent Star Wars releases are performing. And it's these comments that have me scratching my head about Battlefront 2. Let me know what you think. Blake Jorgensen said, I mean, you might ask, well, if there's no Star Wars content in the next six months because movie studios are shut down or TV studios are shut down, does that hurt your business? No, it goes just the opposite, which is, if if you're a Star Wars fan, you want to find every single opportunity to engage in Star Wars. And that's why we saw the growth of Jedi Fallen Order, growth of our Star Wars online business, and continued growth of the catalog of Battlefield 1 or Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2 during the quarter. Wait, so they're saying that they saw growth in Battlefront during the last three months? What? It's statements like this that leave me confused. Why would they cancel Battlefront 2's ongoing development if they saw growth? I mean, I guess the statement he made here is kind of general. He's talking about growth in EA's Star Wars online business, which includes all their Star Wars titles from Battlefront 2 to Jedi Fallen Order to The Old Republic. But growth in their catalog of games, I think is referring to a general growth in people playing EA Star Wars games. And the fact he explicitly mentioned Battlefront 1 and two means they're included in this. Throughout this entire meeting, the EA executives also mention how growth in these strange times is unpredictable with everything going on in the world at the moment. And I have no doubt the global pandemic is something not only EA, but most video game publishers and developers are benefiting from. What are people doing a lot of right now? Spending time at home, right? Meaning they have more access to video games and more time to play video games, most likely. Now is possibly a better time than ever to be playing because games allow us to engage and socialize with all the current restrictions we have at the moment. They still allow us to do these things. Video games are a platform for doing so. EA actually just generated record breaking highs in terms of revenue in the past three months. The company earned more money in the past three months than it ever has in this same quarter at this same time of year. That's a huge statement about EA's business and income and how they're taking advantage of the current state of the world, but I mean it's not like it's unusual for EA's business either to grow. Almost every year since 2005 they've recorded an increase in revenue, bar a couple years, and of course that revenue is coming from much more than just their Star Wars games. Apex Legends just had its highest growth spurt in the past three months since launch. Madden also has more engagement than ever. The Sims 4 just recorded 30 million players since launch, an incredibly successful title seeing as though this launched way back in 2014. And what else happened in this quarter? For the first time since 2011, EA decided to put lots of their games back on Steam. You can purchase Battlefront 1 and 2, Jedi Fallen Order, all the Battlefield games and lots more now on Steam. Here they obviously decided they would reach more players by not limiting them to Origin. Previously you could only play these games on Origin if you're on PC. And already this is capturing and reaching out to a larger PC player base. Even Galaxy of Heroes Heroes, the Star Wars mobile game, just had its best three months in the last two years. And if you know anything about this game and the controversy surrounding it regarding microtransactions, this is kind of surprising. The game has now generated over $1 billion with over 30 million lifetime users. It's crazy numbers. If you want to know more about what's happening with this game, I'd recommend either watching Cubs Fan Han or Eckhart's Ladder made a few videos about everything going on with this game. So back to Battlefront 2, I want to take a look at the game's current player count 
account on all platforms and see if this reflects the growth EA's executives are referencing. How many people are actually playing Battlefront 2? Well, on PS4, the game's total play account is about 16.6 million, with 1.4 million new players in the last month. What? Wait a second, so you're saying the game has a total play account of 16 mil, but 1.4 million of these joined in the past month? Battlefront 2 was free on PlayStation Plus last month, but 1.4 million new players, and the game has ended development. Even if the game is free, the fact 1.4 million people were willing to play and download this is staggering. And actually, it's even more. On the 1st of June, there was a total play account of 10.8 million, and now it's over 6 so in two months, it's jumped from 10 to 16. Obviously, part of this is due to it being free, but come on, really? There are also 990,000 returning players, which are players who've earned at least one trophy in the past month. Okay, so what about Xbox? Total play count is 8.9 million, so less than PS4, but Xbox is showing more active monthly users or returning players, with 1.2 million in the past month and 160,000 new players. Players. I mean, that's still a lot of people. PC's numbers are a bit more limited in terms of what we know. Origin doesn't reveal stats for how many people are playing, but luckily Steam does. But because the game only recently launched on Steam, I don't think these numbers are a fair reflection of how many people are actually playing. Average online players for the past 30 days sits at around 15,000, with a peak at 3,725 players active at a single time. And these numbers are quite low by Steam standards. For comparison, I'd imagine not too many people own Battlefront on Steam because they already bought it on Origin if they're playing on PC, but for a comparison, Star Wars The Old Republic averaged about 18,000 players active online at any one time in the last month. So there's a big difference there. So has Battlefront 2's player base significantly dipped, especially on PC? And are these numbers and statistics reliable? It's hard to say what's going on in terms of PC's player base. I personally haven't had any trouble joining games over the past few months. There haven't been any real empty lobbies, but is this something you guys have experienced? Based on the number of players still active on both PS4 and Xbox One, it's really disappointing knowing the game these players are experiencing is the final game, even though it has an enormous amount of content. But that said, one statistic that might shed some light on why the decision was made to cancel ongoing support is Battlefront 2's total play count. 16.6 million on PS4, believe it or not, is quite low for a AAA online multiplayer shooter, especially with a Star Wars theme. By comparison, Battlefront 2015 has a total player count of 17.3 million. This Battlefront was free at one stage if you purchased a new PlayStation Plus subscription, but Battlefront 2015 is barely a shadow of what Battlefront 2 became. Nowhere near the amount of maps or characters, planets, game modes, it's a much smaller game, no single player, and it still sold more copies. Comparing Battlefront 2 to some of the other more recent AAA titles also shows its lacking play account. FIFA, Apex Legends, Call of Duty, GTA, Minecraft, Rocket League, Spider-Man, Fortnite, all the other big hitters all have larger player bases. So with that said, I think it is time to look to the future of Star Wars gaming and that seems to be where EA has their eyes set. EA's Blake Jorgensen went on to say, when you're a Star Wars fan, you want Star Wars and you got to get it somewhere. So that's what we keep coming back to. This is an incredible incredible opportunity for us, but at the same time, we also understand that we don't, we can't predict the future. And so we're always careful of trying to predict the future, but we do see a huge opportunity. He's talking about filling the gap in Star Wars and more specifically Star Wars gaming. We've got season two of The Mandalorian coming out later this year, as well as Lego Star Wars, but that might be it for a while for Star Wars entertainment and new large scale Star Wars titles might still be a few years away. So EA seems to want to use that as an opportunity to satisfy Star Wars fans and gamers by making more Star Wars games. They've already said they're gonna double down on them whether they stick to that or not, let's hope. But the next step in doing so will definitely be with Star Wars Squadrons. He talked about how Squadrons is about giving Star Wars fans their greatest fantasies, being able to fly an X-Wing or a TIE Fighter in a dogfight while opening up new dimensions with VR support and crossplay. Nothing has been done on this scale 
with this style of game. So, like I've said recently, I'm excited for the future of Star Wars games. And even though the sun has set on Battlefront 2's development and there's no sign of Battlefront 3 on the horizon just yet, hopefully there'll still be a lot to entertain us over the next few years. So, what do you make of all this? Do you think EA are heading in the right direction with Star Wars? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and join my Discord to keep up to date with Star Wars gaming, news, and lots more. And thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon. <laughs> Stay bombastic.